once again all the people who are joining us right now uh good morning good afternoon good evening based on your time zone and uh you know uh, what is going to uh, uh we are going to start today's session now and on you know uh, what we will be doing we will be learning few simple concept for the day and those concept specifically going to be related to your sniffing okay uh, so we will be just going to discuss them and we are going to talk about and see few simple practical okay so in here you are not uh, you know uh, you are going to go and you are gonna just learn some of the very basic concept that what is related to sniffing what is sniffing and all these simple things so today is our day 21 of the your cyber security foundation course and we are going to uh, let you know on to the some more concepts over here in the upcoming days and today we will be mostly targeting the sniffing part you can see only three topics sniffing type of sniffing and sniffing technique that's it right these three are going to be the today's agenda now in this one uh, this is today i think offensive uh, security is seventh day right so we will be just getting a very good idea and i am hoping everyone is learning a good uh, amount of knowledge you know via the practicals via the theory as well and you know uh, it is good for the, the starting the your career in the cyber security itself now while we are on to this particular uh, your day to day tasks uh, we will be just I will I will just remind you that what we have done yesterday yesterday we were discussing about the malwares okay and yesterday I was thinking that okay today could be a small session but no again when I we start creating the malware discussing about them the whole time was there so we have seen the malware types of malware creating few malware simple ones so those kind of thing and what are the you know your malware analysis techniques we have seen that as well so those are going to be a very few simple things that is going to be in there that we are discussing at this point now yesterday's session now today's session is again short simple crisp sniffing type of sniffing and sniffing techniques okay so sniffing like catherine give one answer sniff police dog right so i was just thinking that what is the very first thing that is coming into your mind that what it could be okay so that was the very first thing that I remember I was in this, you know, new to this field and, you know, the same question was asked, you know, first time I was in a seminar and, you know, talking about, you know, hearing about this thing, uh, cyber security webinar. So they asked the same question that what do you think, you know, why are this thing? So I always say, um, I was also saying that, okay, that first thing that comes into my mind is that, uh, you know, sniffing that a dog who is going ahead and sniffing something. So it is very similar to that as well. It means you know we are in the pen testing business over here so what we are doing the data is like gold for us right and even in the modern environment we always say that data is the new gold okay so when there is a data you are trying to go ahead and you are trying to get your hands on that data that is traveling now we are pretty much aware that data can either travel via the you know your network okay so either you will be taking it via the network that data is being traveled through whole the network or either via the your you know either network could be like you know physical network or a wireless network both or via some you know hard drives your usb sticks using that your data is being traveled so there are two ways that the, how your data it can travel over there so now attacker they will try to sniff your network that data is traveling from one point to another point they will be in this whole thing you will be seeing in this whole scenario i am talking about that attacker is on your network let's say for example sitting on your network connected on your network and then data is traveling from one point to another point and try to steal that data okay that this is my data that what i want to go ahead and get my high hands on so a simple example uh, I remember there used to be uh, when I was a kid, there was an Indian movie where what was happening? It was a comedy movie. So two parties, they were communicating over a telephone. Right. So what was happening? A third person, uh, you know, that was a landline phones that we used to have. So, you know, one person was climbing up into the, you know, telephone wire line. He put a wire in between and he was, you know, uh, in you know, sitting in between and 
he was in the you know listening that conversation in between or one more thing we can say is when we talk about this so you go in there uh, the attack oh sorry that person was communicating in between and you know what it is doing like person a wants to communicate with the person b so what attacker we were that person was doing a and b a and b they are communicating right so the third person was climbing up to the pole and sitting in between and talking with a as pretending to be b and you know b you know uh, to b it was pretending to be a and you know communicating with them so that kind of a thing if you have seen or you know someone listening to the communication so what this kind of scenario is called this is an example of a sniffing but what it is called okay so this is called you know not the three way handshake and all this will be called your simple wire tapping this was the example of the wire tapping okay so that is also a method of sniffing simple as that so this is also a method of your sniffing over here now when we are talking about whole this scenario uh, oh yeah sorry wire tapping okay so here when we are talking about this this is just a simple example that i started with for the people to give for everyone who is coming from also from the bit non technical background never heard about this you will be easily simply you know uh, understanding that what is going on right now so this is the one way of doing this thing now this is the something that attacker will be trying to do you know you are communicating what you are doing you are sending your usernames and password so they will try to capture them as well so what you will see you know if i will get, take you before i gave you the official definition and all so something that we need to understand most of the examples you will be seeing will be similar to this thing right your victim is there your attacker is there you are communicating is sitting in between or it is in your network and try to listen or capture everything that you are being you know you are exchanging with each other right so this is going to be the your very uh, you know i would say typical examples for the scenario over here now when we talk about all these things uh, that what is going on how this will be happening and in the example what can happen is you know for the example you can see that if this was my network my local area network and multiple systems were there so attacker could be one of them and then when network is you know traffic is passing through the here or anywhere just sitting and capturing this packet and try to understand that what is going on so few examples like this we will be seeing over here itself so now we will be going ahead and we will be start discussing the your sniffing and its contact uh, your different different types and all and first of all let me just go here and it is all the inks from the slide and yeah let's just go and talk about the sniffing now in here we will be starting with the definition so packet sniffing it is going to be a process of monitoring and capturing all data packet which is going through a network using a software application or even you will see hardware devices as well so you know attacker put a hardware device means they you know, connect its net laptop any system to the network and now becoming a part of the network and then try to capture the packets or data from there right so it will allow your you know any attacker to observe and access the entire network traffic from a given point okay and packet sniffing it will be allowing attacker to gather the lot of sensitive information that is over there like you know you can see in cyber security sniffing related to practice of intercepting and analyzing network traffic to gain access of sensitive information such as username password and other confidential data okay once the sniffer you know the tools that they will be using it will be called sniffer if they capture the packet of you know packets of data it can analyze the content and extract the valuable information from them even though if you you know capture some packet and it is encrypted so attacker they will try to go ahead and try to decrypt them as well okay so decryption process also you know try to gather information if password is going in the encrypted format so they are they will obviously try to go ahead and try to go and capture the data over there so it could be work in the different environment like you are in the shared ethernet 
or switched internet you know which kind of the ethernet things you are using that will be depending on that particular scenario that how it is going to go ahead and how they are going to perform the attack it will be depending on that now when we talk about that which protocol are affected by the sniffing almost everyone we can say but yes your http your smtp you know uh, nntp okay your pop pop 3 ftp imap telnet different different protocols are going to be affected by them over here so once we establish that what is going to be my uh sniffing now we will be talking about the you know very simple a uh, few concepts moving ahead so what can be sniffed first of all you know you are sniffing something you are going to go ahead and you are going to work with the your email traffic ftp password your uh, web traffic your telnet password router's configuration and chat session and traffic itself okay now when we are talking about these uh, particular scenarios going over there and working with these things so i will be showing you some simple examples as well going ahead okay so when we are talking about these kind of a thing we will be just simply looking for these things okay so and and yeah almost everything we can capture so i will be showing you one you know password capturing uh, example as well so yeah so nntp who is asking uh, it is called the network news transfer protocol okay so uh, this is the one thing now we are going to have these things that we can capture moving ahead what is going to be there there is going to be the different types of sniffing itself now before we understand that thing types of sniffing i just want to remind you i think uh, in the networking part okay uh when we are talking about the networking part over here uh in the networking part types of sniffing so we are talking about few uh, simple steps over here so in the networking you must have a two terms your hub and switches right don't worry in the slides you know we don't have that much of information that we have with the discussions okay hub and switches right so when we are talking about the hub and switches one thing you will be familiar with the hub if this is a hub and six people are connected over here okay and there is a property of hub and what is that if it is you know a is sending packet right so there is a property of a hub what will happen how that packet will be sent into the your network so how it is usually i would say sent to the you know destination yes correct broadcast so it broadcast the message so if a want to send a packet to e or f anyone it will broadcast broadcast means this packet will be traveling in whole the network and how each of your devices configured your network interface car how they have configured that they will only receive the message that meant for them nothing else right so if packet is not meant for b c d f only meant for e so only e will be accepting it rest of the you know these devices they will be rejecting the packet so this is in a normal situation now let's say this f was the attacker now what f needs to do f need to install in its system a tools like the you know wireshark okay a tools like the tcp dump and use these kind of a tool simply to go ahead and you know put its network card into the promiscuous mode okay and what is promiscuous mode it will be kind of you know making the changes in your network interface card that no matter what to whom this particular packet is meant for okay no matter for whom this packet is meant for right you are going to go ahead and accept it 
right? So it is traveling. You are just listening to the all packet, capturing everything. And then it's just up to you that you can listen or do whatever we want with them. You can do that, right? Very first thing. Now, this was obviously a security kind of the your uh, drawback, right? So what is the solution of this? Hub's solution was switch, right? So in the same scenario, what they will be doing, they will be creating a cam table. So just to give you the idea that there will be a port and then there will be the your MAC addresses, like you'll be saying that port number one belongs to the MAC address A, 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 two belongs to the B, 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 you know, just like that, right? So they will be creating a cam table over here, right, like this. Three belongs to C, C, C. Four belong to D, 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 like this. Okay. So now the packet, if you have to send, you will be sending it to the exactly now you know where you need to send the packet over there. Right. So this is how we just started. Now, this will give you the idea. So I will talk about one attack. Okay. So this will give you the idea this time. So this was the first, this was the hub. Okay. So hub is doing this thing. Then there is, you know, if, if hub was doing this thing and attacker was doing this kind of an attack, simply not doing anything, simply changing its setting. Now switch is making it difficult. Now what attacker they start to, there is one attack known as the Mac flooding. I have the PDF on it. So what I need to do is let me just take you first of all over there into the PDF of the same. Okay, there will be one thing directly. First, I'm talking about the attack itself. Okay, so you will see uh, here. Right, so simply Mac flooding. What it is going to do is you need to understand if you are creating a table, that table will be having a limit. Right, that how many records it can store. Now, using the tool like the Mac off, Okay, using the tool like Mac off, what I, I am doing here. So I haven't in, just installed the Mac off in my Kali machine. I am unable to do that. It is not having the space. So the, that is the one thing. But simply what you have to do, you have to just tell it that you are just changing it to the ETH zero. You know, interface you are using the whatever your Ethernet zero port you are using WLAN zero. You check that and you are telling hyphen and 10. Means 10 fake packets you are going to generate. So what it is doing with the tools like Mac off a fake record request you will be sending to the your router. OK, that OK, send it. What a fake ARP request. You'll be sending what a fake ARP request over here to the interface where you want to send. Now, when you send a fake ARP request, what is going to you know it is usually broadcast. So what is going to happen? It is going to make an entry onto your cam table. And what you are trying to do with this thing, you try to fill this cam table, right? Because there will be a limit and you will try to fulfill, you know, completely fill this table. Once this kind of the table is complete. Now what the hub is going to, oh, sorry, so how, what switch is going to do in that case? That it will start acting like a hub means it will start broadcasting the packet. Okay, once it start broadcasting the packet, what is going to happen now? You know, you got your same situation as hub like earlier, right? It is broadcasting the packet means now again, you need to just change the setting on your system and all, you know, everything is good to go. Right now you can just simply go ahead and you know, sniff the packet like you were doing in the hub with the Wireshark and all. But there is a significant difference between the both method. Okay, I just talk about the Mac flooding. Now, both method has a difference. What is that? In this attack, okay, so you can, you know, just simply let do let me know in the yes and no. Did I make any changes in the network, network device or any of the machine? Did I make any change? No, right? And in Mac flooding, did I make any changes in the network, network devices, any other devices where I was sending a fake ARP request? Right? So in here, I didn't make any changes. Whatever changes I made in this hub example, I was making it on my system. 
okay i am the owner of my system i can install a tool okay and usually a you know a win pcap kind of a file it got installed with the tcp dump wireshark network miner the kind of a tools so this is usually that what will happen and this is here a category which is called let me just clear this thing now okay if this is uh, completely clear with you let me remove these drawing okay and go ahead and then there are two type of sniffing first is going to be the your passive sniffing second is going to be your active sniffing over there right so one is going to be the passive one is going to be the active sniffing over there right so passive sniffing is a type of attack where attacker simply monitor the network traffic without modifying or injecting any packet this type of sniffing can be more difficult to detect because it doesn't disrupt the network traffic making it harder to detect right and in active sniffing your you know it is going to involve the attacker modifying network traffic by injecting packet into the network this can be used to steal data or to launch any other kind of the attacks as well so this is the very simple i will say starting point you know that we have over here okay so we have this the mac flooding and we have the your you know that example of hub and that is the difference between passive and the active sniffing over there so we can say active sniffing is used to sniff a switch based network usually and it will be involving like you know injecting our packet into the network switch contain your know, switch scam or you know different ports and all these kind of a things over there so this is going to be one thing and passive is you know you just you know uh, sitting passively quiet over there so this is going to be the part which is there now in active sniffing if we talk about there are going to be the n number of techniques that is going to be there there is mac flooding mac spoofing dscp starvation rogue dscp server attack dns cache poisoning arc poisoning wiretapping all these kind of things so wiretapping example i was giving you earlier right that you have you might have seen in the movies so that was the example for the your wiretapping over here now we will go ahead and we will be seeing you know first of all like mac flooding was the very first attack after this slide that you will be having but in most of the cases what you also will be seeing is the attackers you know what we do uh, they will place another device in the, your network and you know making like they can have if you have a mirror port or span port or have you heard about the tap sensor a very good example is tap sensor okay so just like mirror port span port they make a copy of your data attacker in your network can put or in your network devices can put a tap sensor which will be making a copy of data and at that they will be receiving a copy of your data that is flowing through the network now what they have to do they have to just sit there and quietly listen to the conversation that is going on what is there how things are there so first of all through the wireshark we will try to see that how to capture the your different resources scenario itself so for that what we will be doing we'll be going ahead and now we are going to go ahead and capture the some packets over here okay so i will show you uh, already wireshark example i have already shown you on the your you know information gathering day that how it is going to work so today we'll be seeing something that we haven't seen on that particular day so today again on the ethernet zero port right let's say that this is a machine where i keep sending the traffic okay so this with the help of wireshark i am listening to its ethernet zero port right now mm -hmm. no filter is there or anything so it should be capturing some packet i am just waiting for this why it is so quiet right now it should be capturing a number of packets that is going on so it is listening to my conversation i am not putting any filter and with that let me just go ahead and even let me show you a very simple http example let me go to the your a private window over here now in here because we are listening to the conversation so it i'm hoping that some packets yeah so there you can see there are some packets start being exchanged good through the network now in here i will be going ahead and i am going to open the test php one web okay test
one map. I am right. This is the one. Yep, Wireshark should not be the machine. The tool should be presented, right? Like I'm saying that, you know, uh, when you are at this point, someone put a tap sensor and start sending the data to the machine. So the machine which is, you know, being part or the attacker is part of your network in the hub example, like we were talking about. So attacker was sitting there and will be just going ahead. And in the attacker system, we need to be over your Wireshark. Okay. So we are just here. So we are back here, uh, here. So let me just increase the size over here. Okay, this is the Akinetix. So what we need to do, there should be the login. Welcome to our place, where is the login button? Ah, oh, I'll sign up your profile. Okay, so here, this is the, your my sign in page over here. Okay, so we are at this point, packets are being captured. I will give the username over here. So username, let's say I'm giving, for example, Risha. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to type the password, okay. Uh, like this, I, I entered the password as well. And now simply I will click on login over here. So I log in, okay, and it didn't have, you know, you please use the username password test test. Okay, it is giving me suggestion because it is good for the, you know, web application testing. Now, a lot of packet are being captured. Let me stop it. So this red button was there for the stop. So I click on that and it's, it's stop capturing the packet. Now, once I stop capturing the packet, I will go in here and I will type something like your HTTP and I will do the search. You know, this is the filter. So I will put the filter and it will be showing you wherever HTTP will be written over here. So all get method, post method, everything will be over here. So you can investigate all of them, but although I will be more interested in the your post over here. So I'm just going to check HTTP get, HTTP get method, get method, HTTP here. This is the post part, right? of your HTTP. So what I'm going to do, first thing that we can check is going to be in this one. Hypertext transfer protocol. If you want, you can just check it here. You can get the whole thing, post, user agent, accept, accept, reference, content type, right? So all these things are going to be in here that you want to see, you want to investigate. Anything that you want to go, you can have it over here. So like, uh, Content length is there. Anything you can just expand them and get more detail as well. And I can extend this as well. And this is the HTML form URL encoded. So here, if you will see my username and password is here. So username was Rishabh Kutyal and in you know info sector in his best was the password. Right, so simple as that. You don't didn't do anything over here. And if you know someone wants to, you know the, all the files that you have captured. If you want to save them, you can click on file. You can click on save, and you can save the whole packets over there. That yes, it is done, and it is, you know, kind of working. So you have captured, and you know the traffic that was being sent. You were sniffing it, and you can see that what they were exchanging over there. So you can see grabbing the usernames and password. Very simple thing that I have. Now, if I close this one, you might you know, quit without saving. If you can save it and it will be storing the particular file with the extension of .pcap. So whenever you will be seeing that .pcap, it means a packet capture file, okay? Now, the same your, uh, this, when we talk about your Wireshark, it has, you know, it's kind of command line variant. Have you guys heard about the TCP dump? So you can have this whole thing. So, you know, we know very easy to use these kind of a thing. So you'll be just going and having something like TCP dump hyphen H will be giving you the whole help section. So what you can do hard high, you know, for just some of the examples you will be seeing over here. Okay. 
so that is going to be in there right so that is the one thing okay so richard is asking that how wireshark got the data uh, you know richard when i open the wireshark i selected the interface eth0 ethernet 0 port and it start listening to that whatever files were being through communication that was happening through that ethernet 0 port it is start getting that particular data over there okay now similar to that you know what we need to do is you want uh, you know you need to select the interface here as well right just like we did over there so if you want you can use the different different ways as well uh, you know the different commands as well you can see already for selecting interface hyphen i is there but if you want to see how many interface is available you can just simply type something like oh, tcp dump tcp dump and hyphen capital d so it will tell me that in my machine right now how many ports i am having able, you know, available for communication or for to listening to the conversation right all these are the different interfaces over there now what we can do is something like this tcp dump and hyphen i my eth0 up and running you can see up and running so i can do something like the your hyphen i eth0 right and enter okay so this is something we can see that what kind of things are going to be there even we can select that what kind of you know determine which direction you want to go ahead and you guys want to listen to like incoming outgoing what kind of the traffic you want to listen so after this hyphen i et zero i can type something like hyphen q and the direction in or out which you want to hear listen so this is something that you can run obviously very easily so you can pick up your you know particular port which one you want to go ahead and you know communicate or investigate itself over there right so what is going to happen is we are listening to the different things over there right so this is the one thing so whatever communication is going on it is just simply going ahead and capturing it over there even if i will be typing hyphen v you can see here for the full protocol decode so if you want like you know uh, in the bottom part of wireshark there was the protocol decode that what is going on how things are going on so you want you can type that as well okay so you know this kind of thing can also run even i can go with this something like that how many data packets you want to capture like right now it is keep going on so what i will do okay i stop this thing i can type something like data eth0 and hyphen c and five packets only so it will be listening to the, uh, the five packets it will be going ahead and capturing those things it will be you know you will be refining the amount of data that what you want to capture with the hyphen c as well right exact amount of the data that what you want to capture so i did five over there so this is something that you can go ahead and get itself as well okay and you know you can get the whole if you want ethernet headers to be captured as well so you can go with this something like you know hyphen e command so there are a lot of the different command which will be helping you out over there even like i was talking about okay i'm just waiting for the five packets so i don't know where they are about to be exchanged so instead of that like hyphen i ethernet zero we can have hyphen v verbosity for getting more details that what more details are going to be captured over there so we can run this particular as well right and we can also you know use that if i only want tcp packet so with this thing what i can do tcp hyphen tcp dump hyphen n and tcp so it will only capture the tcp packets that's it nothing else over there and even we can define like filters there was we can define source by src destination by dst all these kind of things can be uh, easily done over there and captured as well that what you want to do as well so like this is something that is going on so i am listening to the all the incoming packets and all now you want to like capture some sky code as well so you are running this whole thing okay so we are going ahead and we are running this whole thing we can just go ahead and we can use something like what i can use with this one is okay so what else 
Okay, one thing we can do is we can if we want to see the post part of that, right? Like username and password where we were capturing the things. So how it can be done via this one is this is going to be your. Uh, we can give the command like PCP dump. And Ethernet port we are which we are listening to already and grab hyphen E like this. Okay, a command that I can do is if you want to capture the post part of it, so you will be going with the TCP dump. Hyphen N hyphen I and interface is ETH zero over here, right? And now with this one, we if we want to capture the SKI values as well, so hyphen A SKI value it's also whatever it you know parameters it is capturing. So SKI value like. Uh, in the your these Wireshark, the bottom part is going to explain everything. Lot of things it will be showing you. So that if you want SKI part of this as well as a parameter, you will be using the hyphen A. And then if I just want to grab the post commands, so you know, grab and I will say whatever is there, hyphen E, your post, something like this. This will be only capturing the post part. That's it. Right. So if you will be again going and again try to log in with the admin admin. OK, like this and if this packet will go, this is going to go ahead and this is going to capture your head your know, part of the your. Yeah, you can see post was being sent and it captured it right, but not a very detailed one. So that's why you need to go and use the n number of different combination of different different commands and everything over there. So you need to store the file and then later on you will be going ahead and act, you know, kind of. Examining it so the past, you know, if you want to capture the whole username password, this needs to be a bit lengthy command means if different ports protocols, you know, you need to define that which they are using and whole kind of a, you know, a lot of things you need to go ahead and capture and, you know, totally means. Uh, understanding the TCP dump will be taking a time. I wanted to give you just the idea over here that how you'd be capturing the post and all the other data over here. But just like this, if you want to see that there will be a very lengthy explanations and, you know, switches that you will be using to go ahead and with the grab and using the. You know, TCP dump to capture the same kind of a file which we were doing with the wire shark. So these are the simple tools command line and that's why you know why wire shark is more popular. If you have to work with the TCP dump, you need to be familiar with a lot of command, a heap of a commands as well, switches how they are working and everything. And that's why it is a bit of a time taking process, right? So with over the time you will be gaining the experience in it and then you will be becoming a bit more familiar in this area. So these were the first few things that what we were. Talking about. Now, if you want to use, uh, you know, if you have installed the latest installation of the Kali, uh, my Kali's cache and different different things are filled, so I cannot install it. So if you want to use, I have already shown you this example like Mac off right tool, which you can just simply go ahead, put the interface name and how many packets fake ARP requests you want to send. You can do that kind of a thing simple as that. Now going ahead is the another thing that is the Mac spoofing. Now Mac spoofing is a technique which is allowing any attacker to modify the Mac. OK, address of a network interface, making it appear as it belongs to the different device. Right, so this is going to be in there like here. We'll be showing checking this kind of a thing. OK, so what it is doing? It is spoofing the Mac. So this was your current Mac. This is your permanent Mac and it will be giving your device a new Mac using which you can go ahead and simply communicate. So if you want to send the fake packets or anything, you can use that you know, uh, Mac changer over there that is going to be there. So Mac address, they are you know, uh, they are unique identifiers which is assigned to the your network interface and they are used to identify device on the network. OK, so we are already familiar. Mac address is your physical address and using this you can just simply do this and one of the you know, there are some third party tools as well. It's like if you will be seeing. Uh, there was one thing uh, the third party tools for changing the Mac addresses as well and even uh, graphic base as well. If you guys remember in between what happened is some mobile phones they were having the pre-installed mac changers 
which will be changing your MAC addresses, right? And many governments then ban those kind of the phones as well, right? So that, you know, because it was becoming very difficult for them to track that who is the actual user, okay? So this is the one problem. And one thing, if you guys are familiar, whitelisting, blacklisting kind of a thing, okay? So, you know, what happened is when uh, we were in college, so, you know, only few people used to have the luxury of the wireless network, you know, Wi-Fi routers. So a lot of people, you know, they come to a place and they connect to a Wi-Fi. So what they start doing, they start first blacklisting the Wi-Fi, right? Blacklisting the MAC addresses. So what happened is we were using the tools like these and again connecting with them. Then again, there is something like whitelisting that only these IP uh, MAC addresses are going to be allowed. Now there are your know, the tools as well, which will allow you to change your MAC address and produce that what you want to produce, right? Means type your own one. So what happened? You know, if you are pretty much familiar with the how to use wireless devices, wireless network, it is easy for you to without even connected, you know, connecting a device what devices currently is connected with that particular Wi-Fi router note their MAC address. Okay, let's say uh, my neighbor is who uh, let's say for example, my neighbor is here. I can see the message from Shubham. Okay, Shubham is my neighbor. Now Shubham is having a router at home and you know, I you know, he has done something like whitelisting. So only his home devices are connected with it. Now, what I can do is if I have proper knowledge and proper tools of wireless without even connecting to this device, I can at least know that what kind of devices are connected with my wireless network and their MAC address is going to be visible. Once you'll be seeing that MAC address, what you are going to do is you are simply going ahead using the tools like Mac Changer and change your MAC address and then you can try to connect over this device as well again. Right means connecting to their network. So these are the you know some of the uses of the Mac spoofing that can be done over the time. So you will see simple what we are going to do. We are going to go ahead and we are going to. I think Mac changer is pre-installed in here. So let's just check this out. OK, Mac changer hyphen H. OK, if we go to the health me uh, health menu, you can see everything is there and that's running good. Now, first thing, but before you start, you know, doing this thing, I need to make my ETH, you know, Ethernet zero port, which is already having my details. Let me just, you know, kind of bring it down first. OK, now what I'm going to do is first of all. Uh, I will be running this thing. OK, if like I not run normal if command if config command there is my eth0 and l0 two, you know, two of the ports so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do is if config eth0 down okay now if you do the if config you can see only one of your uh, network interface going on so ethernet 0 is down now I bring it down now what I'm going to do. I'm going to give it like I will go with my Mac changer hyphen R. OK, and yeah, we were having the help menu of this so you can see what to do hyphen R random set a fully random Mac. OK, reset to original permanent hardware Mac and then hyphen and list keyword key you no know, print off the some known vendors their Mac addresses and you know this is the bias and you can set your mac addresses as well set the mac x x you know in this format so it is telling you that you want to set your mac address you can do that as well all the examples are here so in this one we are going to go ahead and do the simple mac changer and this time i'm going with the random for the eth0 over there OK, and what is my new MAC address? I think everyone can see this thing. What is my new MAC address? This is my. Current or permanent one, so if you want to reset to original, you can use the different commands over here. OK, so if you want to reset to the original hyphen P. 
permanent hardware Mac you will be going at. And this is the another hyphen A, another set random Mac of the same kind. OK, so these kind of the different different options of changing the Macs are there over here. Right, so this is the first part. OK, so Mac address are your physical address, not your logical address means they are not the your IP addresses. They are the your Mac addresses. OK, so. This is one thing. Now uh, what I can do, I can do something like. If config. Your. Uh, ETH zero. If config ETH zero. Up. Right and I can go with the if config again. So now if you will be seeing the details will be again here. Right, so this is going to be in this particular part details we will be seeing and this time can you see my Ethernet? OK, if I will show you the first output over here. This was my MAC address. ETH zero. Now I go ahead. I put ETS down. I change my MAC address. OK, I change my MAC address and now if you will see in here, my MAC address for ETH zero is changed, which is this new new Mac fake Mac. Right now I can send the request whatever request I will be sending. They will be going with this fake Mac address over there. OK, so again I will do the same thing. I will be bringing this down. OK, first if config down and then again hyphen P reset to original. So Mac changer hyphen P and your return to the original so i will do the your original one uh, hyphen mac changer hyphen p ethernet zero point and enter so it goes back to the your permanent one over here so again if config eth zero up okay so this is something that what we can do as well moving ahead so different different kind of the options that is available over here for us. Now moving ahead, we will be talking about, you know, this was the very uh, first thing that we discussed over here. Now let's just talk about the more of the, you know, so for a few practical based one we have seen and one we will be seeing towards the end. So first let's just discuss this something different. Now I think everyone will be remembering in the networking. You might have heard about the DSCP dynamic host configuration protocol. So what is the task of the DHCP? To assign a particular your uh, IP address to the devices that is being connected into your network. So there is a DHCP server who will be assigning the IP addresses over there. Now first thing that attacker they do, they do something like the DHCP starvation attack. OK, they will do DHCP starvation attack. Now the DSCP starvation, uh, there is the tool as well, which is with the name. When we talk about the, you know, your uh, denial of service tool uh, like this one, which can be used for this is a simple GUI based tool, not GUI in the command line you will be running and simply you have to select like it will be asking you press one for the your DSCP starvation tag. So you'll press one, give the you know, uh, target address and it will be just working with that. So we have the tool like this, which you can use. So what it is doing in simple terms, there will be a limit if there is a DHCP server. OK, this DHCP server is there. Now it will be having a limit like here. You can see that it can assign 255 addresses. For example, between this range. OK, now attacker will be sending what is happening in DHCP. If you remember, first message was the broadcast discovery message. So a lot of fake discovery message. It will be sending fake discovery messages that is there any you know DSCP server and if there will be they will be replying back. So it will try to consume all the possible your IP address IP space that was there and all those address will be assigned to the your uh, particular this fake request. So fake you know those requests will be consuming all of the IP address. Now a legitimate user when that will try to connect with this network. 
ओके सो दे विल बी अनेबल टू ऑप्टेन और रिन्यू एन आई पी एड्रेस रिक्वेस्ट वाई एस डी एस सी पी एंड फेल टू गेट दी एक्सेस टू दी नेटवर्क सो इट इज काइंड ऑफ अ डॉस अटैक फॉर दैम राइट डिनाइल ऑफ दिस सर्विस फॉर दैम एंड दिस इज डाउन सो वट इज हैिंग a legitimate user is unable to access the network why because they are unable to get an ip address and there is going to be the you know all the address has been consumed by the attacker so this is being called your dscp starvation attack now further attacker they can take advantage of this situation okay when people are starving they can take advantage of this situation over here and they can do what they can do another attack which is known as the dhcp you know your rogue server attack means what they are doing now is they are going to deploy their own fake dhcp server in the network and requesting or and you know accepting the request on the behalf of the your particular uh dhcp you know your server just like any dhcp server would have respond to it they will be responding just like that okay so this is what they will be doing so first they are going to go ahead they are going to starve this whole thing that okay there is going to be no ip address for the view then they will be having their own fake server set up and with that they will be providing the you know your user the fake entries fake data which will be ending up you know attacker or your victims they will be ending up getting the you know fool by getting fooled by the your attacker so attacker they will set up a rogue dscp server on the network and respond to the dscp request with fake ip addresses resulting in compromised network accesses now this network attack work with the dscp starvation and attacker send tcp ip setting to user after knocking him over the knocking out of the genuine dscp server so what they are going to do they have you know now they will be saying that okay we are the actual you know dhcp server now when this user is trusting that this is the you know the fake server is the real one so by running this rogue dhcp server an attacker first they will be doing what they will be sending a wrong you know tcp ip settings okay they will be doing what they can give you the wrong here you can see wrong default gateway wrong default gateway they can give you that so they will saying that you know attacker attacker machine is a gateway and all the traffic will be redirected over from that particular device and what attacker can now see all the data that is going through there one thing then they can give you the wrong dns server as well okay they will tell you that attacker is a dns server so now once attacker is you know they will be saying that their machine is the dns server so now all your requests which website you want to go you could be redirected anywhere any fake website and you know all your data is compromised okay with that they can give you the completely wrong ip address as well when you have the wrong ip address what it mean it means you are unable to you know access the you know network and that means what that means kind of a dos attack okay dos with the spoofed ip you will see that your network is down your network is down why because you are unable to access the network why because it is a you know, wrong ip address so this kind of thing might happen with the rogue dscp server attacks over there right so this is called the your dscp uh, your attacks as well okay so apart from this what is the next okay the next is going to be the dns cache poisoning now your dns cache could be poisoned so if you guys remember you know that uh, dns you know how dns request it work it goes and check into the you know uh, its local host file first right that whether it can find the ip address or not and then it goes to the some place like which is called your local dns cache okay which is also called resolver's cache then if in you know you are in the local network in your organization you have put deploy some local dns server so then it will be leaving your the system and then it will be going to the local dns server cache i know in there it will be checking so there are different places where dns 
can be poisoned. OK, at the different different multiple level, there will be the opportunity for the attacker to go ahead and kind of. Simply work with that, right? Means go there and go with the simple kind of this scenario over there. When we talk about these things, the first thing that is going to be in there is going to be the DNS cache poisoning. So DNS cache poisoning, also known as the DNS spoofing. It is a type of cyber attack that is going to exploit vulnerability in the domain name system and redirect Internet traffic to a malicious website. So if you have configured your DNS server with the some well with vulnerabilities, it will be taking advantage of that going there and changing the DNS caches itself. So that is going to do, do first thing. Now DNS cache poisoning it occur when attacker is able to inject false DNS information into the cache of a recursive DNS resolver, the server which was resolving your query. So instead of that, you know, in its cache earlier, Google.com was something like Google.com was at 8.8.8.8. Now you change it. Attacker find a vulnerability, get access of it, send a fake one, fake DNA, false DNS information, and now say remove this thing and said it is hosted on the 20.29.29.10. And now in here, what they will be doing is they will be having a fake Google server. And it will be asking you to log do the login first. Now, as soon as you will do the login, it will redirect you to the original page and you will think, OK, I was entering my credential and I must have entered wrong one. And that's why. <clears throat> and that's why it is just sending me over the wrong information over here. So this can happen as well. Right? So once the false DNS information in the resolver's cache, any query from that domain name will be redirected to the IP address specified by the attacker like I was saying. OK, so rather than legitimate IP address, it will be sent to the bogus one and this can allow the attacker to redirect internal traffic to a malicious website which may contain a malware or even a phishing page as well. OK, so these are the challenges that what you can face over there at the different stages itself. Right. So, you know, injecting the fake DNS entry onto the DNS server and then redirecting to the you know, fake account that is going to be called your DNS cache poisoning itself. Now, OK, so I will be, you know, going ahead and later I will be showing you this example of this DNS cache that how it can be modified and, you know, you could be redirected to the very specific IP addresses, you know, of your work. Right, so how you will be seeing this whole thing that is with the screenshots here that what you have to do, which files you have to change. OK, so there are going to be these files, uh, you know, bit different method I will be using in then. So, you know, it is just asking you here to change this R I N E T D file, which I think I might not have in the bit older version of Kali. So I will be using a bit different method, but I will be showing you this practically. But first, let's just talk about the art poisoning spoofing first. And then we will discuss it. OK, now ARP. So I think everyone familiar with the ARP that ARP task is to map an IP address to a MAC address. Right, first of all. OK, this is the task of the ARP over here. Now. Attacker, but first thing what attacker need attacker need to have access to the network already now they will be attacker will be scanning the whole of your network that how many devices are there in your network and how many you know this is the router in between okay how many devices are there what are their ip addresses okay at least two devices ip address they are going to need now attacker they will be using a spoofing tool there is the tool like arp spoof okay there is also the drift net that they can use and they will be sending the forged ARP request. You know, forged ARP, you know, response. And why I'm talking about the response. So there is a cat, you know, type of the your ARP that one feature of it is, you know, usually if I my device want to know that to whom this IP address belongs to. So my device will be raising that query that you know this IP belongs to which device and then in the response someone will send that. Okay, it belongs to me. 
to whomever it will be belonging and I will be updating my entry on my device. OK, I have a local R cache. Now thing is if even I didn't raise this query and someone just simply sent a response to my device that this IP address belongs to this Mac address. My device will update it. OK, even though I didn't ask for it, but my device will update it. So attacker is taking the advantage of this situation. Now using these kind of a tool, they will be sending a forge, you know, the forge response to the, you know, let's say that two devices. One you are having this device, one the router. OK, you are having the IP address of two devices. You scan this thing, you got the two IP addresses. Now these for forge response, what you know, or fake response, what they will do, they will be advertising the correct MAC address for both IP address. OK, so both IP address one will be belonging to the, you know, one IP address is belong to the here. One IP address belong to this device, device A and router, right? And this is my hacker who is sitting here. Now it will be showing the correct address for both IP addresses. In, and that MAC address is going to be the attacker's MAC address. So this is going to fool both router and workstation. So to router, what it will do, it will be going to the router. So what usually should happen if there is a router? There is a system. OK, system A. If these two parties are in here, so simply, you know, this should be sending the something like, you know, uh, this is will be having like, you know, I am router. Right, this will be having I am system A and they will be directly communicating with each other. But when the attacker is sitting in between attacker sent what? Fake request, you know, fake app to both to router and to the system. So it will be still saying I am a, the router, but to this one, what it will be saying, attacker will be saying I am system A, right? And to system A, what attacker is going to say? The attacker is going to say I am router, and this is already I am system A, right? So attacker is doing something like this, updating their R cache over there. Right, and this is what attacker is doing now. But these, when you are sending the these fake requests, fake, you know, uh, the attacker will be sending those forged ARP requests to both the parties. The two devices they will be updating their ARP cache entry. Okay, from the that particular point onward, and whenever this router has to send any packet to A, it will be sent to this MAC address which belongs to my. Attacker and A has to send anything to router. A will be sending it to whom? To my attacker itself, right? So this is what attacker is now secretly sitting in the middle of the communication, right? And can I call this now a man in the middle attack? Right? A man is sitting in between listening to all communication. This will be known as the man in the middle attack itself. So this is the first thing. Correct everyone. So what we can do, OK, uh, how we can detect the R cache poisoning. One of the simplest thing that you can do. Simplest thing, no tool, nothing as well. You can go ahead and you can simply type R hyphen A. It will be doing what? Over here. So when we are talking about this thing, what is happening? In this case, I'm going to go ahead and do something like the ARP hyphen A. OK, and guys, uh, this might be a bit off for those people who are not familiar with the protocol that what and why I'm talking about this thing. OK, so here if you will see this is my local ARP cache. So if you will be checking that and you are going through the simple way of detecting the ARP cache has been poisoned and why I'm saying so, you know, we can say it. It is a ARP cache spoofing. So you are spoofing the R cache. R cache spoofing. OK. Now when we are talking about the R cache spoofing, you know that it is spoofing, but why result of it is R poisoning. Result of that is going to be the R poisoning and why I'm saying that. Are poisoning why? Because you know all devices they are in the same network. Their R cache should be look like same, 
but no everyone's arc cash will be different right and now due to this thing this is called your arc cash poison and someone has entered the fake entries over there and this is whole thing that is causing it so you know that's why the arc cash poisoning is a result of the arc spoofing so what will be there if you will see that you know you run the command and you will see two different ip address having the same mac address anywhere two different IP address having the same MAC address. So you can keep checking that, right? If you are, you know, physical address, it is being repeated and it is belong to two different IP addresses. You can easily detect then in that particular case, someone is doing the RP spoof, you know, our poisoning already happened in your device, right? So this is what you will be calling the R poisoning. Okay, and very simple thing because, you know, one MAC address belonging to two IP address that will be a kind of the indicator that it had someone has done the same thing. Now, if you will read the same thing, that what it is, ARP spoofing, I think I explained it. So ARP poisoning, also known ARP spoofing, is a type of cyber attack. Allow an attacker to intercept network traffic on a local network. In ARP poisoning attack, attackers send falsified ARP message to other device on the local network tricking them into associating the attacker's MAC address with the IP address of another device or network. And this can allow attacker to intercept and modify network traffic meant for the targeted device. So like the example I was giving to you that what could be result of this thing over there. OK, so this is a bit of a diagram that is there for the MAC address spoofing that what is you know happening, sending the fake request everything you can look through this one right working that how it is working so i try to give you the uh, rather simpler example that how it is working over there now what could be the result of the your r poisoning so there could be the things like you can do the packet sniffing attacker is doing what is sniffing the packet going from the one one a to b they can sniff that second thing is attacker can do the session hijacking because they have the idea so they can just simply you know they can they will be capturing every packet that is going from a to b and uh, any session going between the device a and you know let's say you are accessing facebook.com they can hijack that session because they have the tokenized session id cookies everything they can do that as well you know vi you know uh, your voice over call voice over uh, ip means your whatsapp call kind of a thing they can be also listened as well. Then there is going to be the man in the middle attack. Right? So this is going to be the you know man in the middle attack, the example that I was showing you. Then data interception obviously is stealing the password, denial of service. So n number of the options that is going to be in there that you can do with the R poisoning over here. Now with this, uh, what we will do, I will try, I will be switching to my OK, I will go back a bit and then there was this demo right of the DNS cache poisoning. So let's just try to check this one out. OK. OK, this was the theory for DNS cache poisoning and yeah, let's just check it out over here. OK, so what I'm going to do is just to show you that how DNS cache poisoning will be working. So I will poison the cache of this machine. So first of all. Close this one. Minimize this one. Uh, Ethernet is up. My actual IP address is up and working, right? So let me clear this whole thing over there and let me start from the very beginning itself. Now, in this one, what is going to happen is there is going to be the your, you know, first of all, uh, we need to go ahead and we'll be checking the, you know, uh, we have our own server. What is the IP address of yours? Just keep that in mind. Okay, IP config so that will be 133 okay so that is going to be the 192.168.20.133 now we will be going ahead and we'll be talking about it after this one we'll be going to the okay apache i'm going to start an apache server on this machine right you know showing it like maybe i'm hosting a infosec trains website over there right so for that i will do service apache to start and enter ok 
Okay, so my Apache 2 service start hosting over here. Now, what I am going to do, I am going to check, uh, open the host file and check how many hosts are available right now. So I will go there. So if you are familiar, let me just show you the cat file, cat the file slash etc slash hosts. Okay, this is going to be the file I will enter. So you will see right now. Here it is hosting. Uh, okay. Oh, weakness machine that I was solving. I tried to edit this host file then as well. I didn't remove it yet. So you can see right now local host is there. Usually our Kali is working on 127.0.1.1 as well. So 127 range is running right now. That means uh, the machine that I was hosting. I am hosting it locally on my system. So what I am going to do is on the browser. If you will open something like localhost or 127.0.0.1 and enter it. So this is the Apache 2 server, which I just started. So if you have to publish your application like whole infosec trains code and everything, I will be publishing over here. OK, then it will start showing you something like this over there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a comment in the host directory for the entry for the your infosec train dot com right so let me just go there and let me edit this file nano and i'm doing what uh in the host file i will do slash etc slash host okay enter now i am here so uh we will be adding in the host file a comment one entry with the name infosec train dot com and what I'm going to do is. 0 dot 0 dot 0 dot 0 and I will do what it is for. It is for www dot your. Uh, info sec train dot com. Right, so we will be doing this and let me do one thing. Control X Y and enter okay so this is the host file so if you guys remember uh, i don't know in the i haven't checked that networking session class so if uh, you guys are familiar how our protocol it work so first it try to resolve any of the you know uh, name where onto the your local machines hosts file right it always go there and it check for the Host file that if I want to go there and I want to visit the infosec train.com, then is it going to be available for me or not? Right? So, what is the IP address? So, if you will go here and I will type www.infosec train.com and enter. So, rather than taking to me the original page of infosec train i am getting the apache 2 server means if i have hosted a fake infosec trains website here you might have seen that one right so attacker it redirected it over here itself now maybe on a different port like you know any other port you want to redirect it so you need to control the port forwarding over here so it you know if you are having the some latest of your uh, particular Kali machines, so you might be directly having in etc a file with the name R I N E T D. So if I will show you it in the presentation. Yeah, so this is the first thing that we have completed, right? Starting the heads and adding the you know onto the host file. This is already in there. Open host file, see available host. You know, if browser write your loopback address, you will be seeing opening the servers itself, right? So we have seen both. My infosec train is, you know, whenever I am searching for the infosec train, I am being taken to this particular fake website. Now, you know, you know, you can see make a local host and add a comment like this, and you can open it on the port number 80 always. It is just, you know, telling you that. Then there is one more thing. You can open this rientd.config file and enable port forwarding. That on this specific port, will be accessing also like you know for 443 or like i will be doing it for 8081 so any particular port i can do this set up the port forwarding for this that i am hosting over there as well so if your device is having something like r i n e t d 
file dot config file it's good like if i will show you mine over here i will go here and i will let me just change the directory slash etc and let me do something like grab r i n e t d right so i'm running this let's see that whether any of file related to this is there or not usually it is not going to be in there i have already checked okay mine is a bit older version so that is the one region uh, not properly updated as well so i might need to because i am using a debian based one so i need to use a bit different methodology to do the port forwarding here so as i can see no result is coming till now okay look like it's not going to be successful even if you don't, you are looking for something like this even from your root folder as well you can go ahead and check something kind of this thing right so oh rather than oh my bad rather than this grab i should have run the you know, locate okay file name is r i n e t d okay none right so you know it is not here so if you might have the newer one there will be you know it will be out there but like right now for me it's not there so i need to set the port config here so if you are using the debian based one so like this one you will be having in apache2 folder ports.config file so let me just go to the apache2 folder first okay if i will do the ls over here there is going to be this port.config file so that port configuration i can set it here as well right so we can start go ahead and i can start kind of first i can just show you this thing cat port.config file so there it is only listening to the port number 80 so what i can do i can add one more thing and i can have something like you know adding listening it to the port number 80 80 over there now we can just go ahead and i can edit this file and add a comment that nano and port dot config file so i will be adding that yes also listen for not only this but listen where as well oh sorry i forgot this is a nano not the uh, bash script i was pressing tab okay listen port number 80 81 80 80 whatever you want to just you know go with this one i'm gonna go ahead and going to go control x y enter and again i will check this file whether my changes has been made yes now it is listening to port number 80 and 80 81 as well right so like right now infosec train is going to be over there where it is going to be you know scenarios over there okay now what we are going to do uh, we are at this part we were looking into this one listening to the incoming port now what we will do we will go there and we will set the few things over there now we will be going ahead and we will be setting up the your ip addresses that was there in the default configuration file okay so we'll be typing it like you know uh, that where you want to go that particular website we'll be giving the name and we'll be adding it over here so we will go in here uh one more thing where is the your sites enabled folder so we'll be going in here so we will do what i will edit one more file that is going to be the sites enabled and in there there is going to be the enable and then there will be this default configuration file okay so i will edit this one as well now you can see it is written over here like where you want to forward the particular file itself how you want to forward the file itself so you will be going in there you will be letting it know like this is the whole configuration file virtual host you know edit and then particularly how you want to forward this over here so you can write it at the particular part 
that where you want to hover these things. 80, 80, no, oh sorry, 80, 81, right? So we added this thing and we changed to the port number 80, 81 over here. Okay, so we are changing this thing and enter default file, you know, default configuration where it will be listening to the conversation now. Okay, default by default now it will be listening to rather than 80, Apache server will be listening to the 80, 81 now, right? So once it is done, what I need to do, I need to just simply restart my Apache to server. So system. Oh, oh spelling lot of the time. System CTL and. Restart. Apache 2. OK, once that is done, we will go net stat. OK, I will be running this thing. Listening to the uh, your TLNP. And listen for the Apache. Ah, crap, Apache only. Right, Apache. OK, here. Now, SS. TLNP. Apache. Okay, so we have just restarted and we are listening to the conversation. Now, what we can do, we can just simply go ahead and, you know, after this whole thing, we can simply go, we can type my IP address over here, you know, doing the port forwarding here, like infosec train, you know, dot com and all. So, what we can do, we can go and put something like again. So if you will see in the slides, it will be much easier way. If you have the your file, okay, R I N E T D, okay, this one. Whenever you will be having this one, easy port forwarding over here. You can see you just need to make few changes over here. You just need to type which website where you want to take it, and you know connection port and eighty, and that should be easy for you to bind. You just simply type it. And this will be letting you forward where you want to forward the traffic. You type the password. If someone type infosec train, they are making a connection on the 443. And then, you know, you will be redirecting it where to the this IP address and this option much easier than that, right? Simplest way here. I am taking the bit lengthier way and, you know, just to show you that. What can be done infosec train dot com and then on the port number 8081, like if you want to access. You will be getting the same Apache to server because I haven't posted anything, right? So on 8081 also you are now reaching to the same page. Okay, so this is how you can enable port forwarding, changing the you know settings over there and all. So here as well, I will never try to locate R I N E T D, right? A uh, very confusing name. R I N E T D. So let's just see whether I was typing the wrong or not. So CD dot dot. Oh. And okay, so you can see again nothing. Even if I will dive something like conf, nothing as well. OK, so this is that's why I was showing you the bit different way, but it will be easier if you will be having this file. It will be simply rotating over here. OK, so this is something that when I want to show you that what I did simply I go to the host file. I just go there. I change everything. I was, you know, I make sure that, you know, you will be listening to the now port number 8081 as well. So I will I need to make these changes again. OK, I need to go ahead and I need to just change the all these whole scenarios over there. But yes, I wanted to first show you something like this. So again, if I will go inside your Apache 2 folder. So there was something that I was running. I was doing what? I was changing this site. A, okay, site enabled one, first of all. Uh, so I was changing the virtual host to port number 8081. So I need to go ahead and run that command. 
nano 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 here so in this one again i need to go and set it back okay do not leave your setting like this you know else you might be having the problem to access the internet later on okay so make those changes back so first is this thing second with also i did make a change on the your uh, listens right host file so there also i need to go ahead and change that back okay port dot config so here also i stop listening to the you know if i will listen to 8081 i might give someone you know attacker the one more attacking surface so i'm going to change it back again like right? listen to the port number 8081 and yeah i think this is going to be good now right so simple as that i have shown you this example and if you are familiar it's like etc and host file cd if when i was showing you this whole thing in etc there is the host file okay host file host.config file now in this host.config file what you need to do is you know similar to this host file a host file is in the your windows as well where your when you you know send any new dns request where your device firstly go right so this is just the example that how in a local device you can go ahead and change the settings and you know redirect the dns request so infosec train was redirected to that apache server sorry apache server most of the time itself so this was just a few examples of your sniffings how things they work you know interrupt you know, uh, intercepting the traffic all these kind of a things that what we have discussed for today's session right so this is going to be kind of overview that what we have seen today okay mostly these things